Hi, welcome back to my studio. For those of you that have seen my last video, you'll have noticed I did a uh, landscape using the Pebio 4 Artist markers. Now today I am going to be doing another landscape, but this time my favourite subject matter, which is castles. So today I'm going to be painting Larne Castle from Carmarthenshire. Now I'm going to be using the 2 mil tips in both black and white. In the 4 mil tips I'll be using the dark blue and dark green, red, yellow, brown, white and black. In the 8 mil tips, I'll be using the dark blue, white, dark green, black, red, yellow. And in the 15 mil tips, I'll be using the bronze. I'll also be using a selection of Pebio brushes, as well as the 4 Artist Marker Medium. Now, this medium is a completely odourless medium. Um, literally, you can put your nose right over there, which I don't recommend. Um, but there is no smells, um, so you haven't got to worry about thinner smells around the place. OK, I'll also be using the Pop Art Canvas pad. Now, in this pad, you receive 20 sheets of canvas. And it is, as you see, flexible canvas. And it is primed on the one side. So this is ready to paint on. So I'll be using some of this today. OK, so let's get on with the painting. All I've done here is uh, taped the canvas sheet down onto my board around all edges. That'll give me a nice white border when this is finished. So all we need now is a basic drawing. So all I'm going to do is a small tower, or rather the larger tower, just here in the middle, just there. Off there is going to come a small piece of the castle there, down to there. Up slightly there and down again and across going slightly down bring that down on this side here there is a square tower so pop that in there like that on this side of the castle here I'm gonna bring that across and down now I'm only coming halfway because there's a wall in front here a smaller bit just there and we have another round turret is broken on the top down to there. Now the wall, just there. And underneath here, it's going to be some grasses. We have some bushes in front of the castle here and coming down to the side, just there like that. Here we have some distant hills, there and there, and a water edge, a water line, just there. Now your waterline must be as straight as you can get it. Don't worry if it's not, you can change it later on. So from around here we've got some land coming in there, the difference between the land and the water, and we need a path. Now the path should always be shorter in the distance and wider as it comes forward. The reason being that will make the path sit down and go into the distance. That'll give you your horizontal recession. Okay, so here we have a bridge. Bring the bridge down to here and we have the underneath of the bridge just there and here we've got grasses coming in so i'm just popping those in there just to represent uh, on the inside of the bridge there down to there okay so that's drawing done now don't go too heavy on your drawings i haven't put any details in on the castle it is just a basic outline the rest is filled in with the paint okay so on with the painting now start off with, I want a nice gradiated sky, so I'm going to need the white. When you open these, open them away from your picture. If they splatter down onto the picture, obviously you don't want to ruin your picture. However, because these are oils, if that does happen, you can fix it. I'll show you that a little later on. So all I'm going to do now is, first of all, pop the lid back on, make sure my marker's moving, give it a good shake. When you first get these, you've got to prime the tip as well. So you shake them and then you depress the tip until the tip fills with paint. OK, and then they're ready to go. So I'm going to place this on the lower part of my sky. Just there. Don't be overly worried if you come into your castle. I'm not going to draw around my castle. I want my, cast, uh, my sky to sit 
that way so I'm not going to start drawing up and down here so going along here come into my castle bit doesn't matter and bringing that down to the hills come through your hills slightly with this there not all the way down to the waterline but if you do it doesn't matter the reason being those hills are in the distance and we're going to put white into them anyway to push them further back into the painting next dark blue okay again give that a little shake and ready to go so i'm starting off i'm just literally painting this into the sky okay. just like that. don't worry about the white marks we leave him there at the moment we'll be filling those in in just a moment now as you can see as i come into my white it's getting lighter okay again being not overly cautious about the castle but coming down into just the tops of the hills and this side right the way down to the castle if you do go into your castle don't panic as you can see most of my pencil lines will move anyway the pencil lines are just there as a basic guide there now that's a bit streaky and there's a few gaps that's not a problem all we need is your large three quarter inch flat dip it into some medium now we don't want too much medium on this so tap off the excess there so the brush is literally just damp and stroke side to side now what should happen is the sky will get lighter as you come down like that bring it into your buildings at the side so you don't have a blunt stop in your sky if you start there you can see you've got a line there stroke through edge to edge you don't want any stop marks in your sky okay if you want more white coming down into that so it gets a little bit lighter just add more but we're going to put some clouds in this so don't worry too much about that there quite simple and quite easy clean the brush off okay so clouds again we're going back to the white for the clouds again open it away from your tape uh, from your picture and I'm gonna go straight in with a marker now don't worry if paint gets on this which it is going to you can actually mix this paint on the nibs themselves and the nibs return back to white or whatever color you've used I'll show you that in just a second so first of all I'm depressing the tip slightly to get the paint to come through the pen so it's flooding on my sky flooding is good at this stage okay now I'm just going to literally swirl it a little bit to add want a bit more paint up there add that in bring that down and down into your hills there now at the moment that's not sitting as well as I'd like it now to clean your nib off so we've got to let that settle for a bit, little bit you can see there's a bit of blue on there so we turn that back, simply wipe off the excess blue, pump your marker, and as you can see, we have a pure white again. So don't worry about getting this on you know, darker colours on lighter colours. You can actually mix it on your nibs. Okay, now that's had time to settle in, time to turn those into clouds. So by simply using your finger, swirl the tops of those clouds in to soften them in now they will change slightly as the paint settles in again this is oil paint so I'm just gonna bring that down drag that down swirls there we'll take that up a little bit there as you can see you've got some nice fluffy clouds at the top there we'll soften that in in a bit just let that settle for a little while so bring that in and around there. Now, as you can see, I'm wiping my finger every so often, so I'm not just dragging the paint around. I'm actually taking some off the paper as well, off the canvas. Bring that around there. And soften the top. There. Your fingers are your best tools in painting. Best tools you can have. Now, as that changes and settles in, you can see that's going into the grain now. You can just soften it, just that little tiny touch more. You can add more paint as well if you like. And if you don't like your clouds when you've done them, paint over them. Do them again. Not a problem. You see it's starting to settle into the canvas there. So just give that a little swirl. If the paint stops moving, just add a tiny touch of medium. And you can move that paint again. 
And there we go, some lovely fluffy clouds going on there. Let's just soften that edge down the bottom there. There we go. Now, I don't want to paint these hills yet because that's still too wet and will drag too much into my painting. I do want some of that white in my hills, which it will move when I put the paint over the top. So I'm going to come down to the water. Now, it is important that you never change your blues throughout a, a painting for anything natural. So the sky will reflect, uh, water will reflect the sky colour. It'll also reflect hills and everything else that's around it. So I'm going to start off with the blue. Same blue as the sky, the dark blue. A little bit of white on there. So I'm just going to wipe that off. There we go. Now, on your water edge here, a nice straight line. Now, as you can see, I can come above that pencil line if I like. All the pencil marks on this are going to completely disappear, as you can see around the edge of the castle here. That is not a problem. As I said, they're just a guide. So I'm going to fill the water with blue. Now, as you can see, that looks a bit too bright as well. So I've got to tone that down. Now, I'm not going to tone it down with white because that will push it further back. We are going to add white later once it's dry, but for now, green. Hill reflection are in the water, but we're not going to paint an exact reflection. We're just going to get the colour in there. So, using your green, put a couple of lines through there. And then brown. There we go. I'm using the brown in the 4mm tip as opposed to the 8mm. As you can see, it's a nice round tip on that one because I don't want as much there. And again, using your flat brush with barely any medium on it. So, wipe off excess. And take that and merge those in just like that now if it ends up too green add more blue if it ends up too blue add more green there gently stroke side to side we don't want water going uphill so always side to side Now we will add more detail to that water in a, uh, a little bit later on, we're going to get light reflection on there. But in the meantime I'm going to move around the painting so I can continue painting once areas have dried. Now the sky here is tacky dry, but as you can see no transfer onto my finger. Even though this is oil paint it doesn't dry incredibly quickly. Just wipe that away there. It does dry incredibly quickly. It's touch dry within 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how thick you put it on. And it's varnishable within 24 hours. So, now I'm going to come to these hills. So, I want to decide which side my light is coming from. And I need yellow for my highlight. <clears throat> so, I give that a little shake. In this case, I want my light coming from the right. So, on these distant hills here, I'm going to place my highlight on the right there. Now I need to, a little bit, there we go, a little bit more paint coming out there. Depress your tips when you want more paint, but be careful if it floods on your painting. Yeah. However you can fix it, just take it off with a brush. Okay, so yellow is in. Green. There we go. The dark green again. And I'm going to bring that in. So let's just depress that off the side of the picture because I don't want to risk flooding too much of this. There we go, it's working through the nib. Excellent. There, bring the green in. This green is getting a little bit light. It has done a lot of paintings with me. So it's a good opportunity now to show you how to prepare a new one. When you have a brand new marker, shake to prime it, twist the cellophane and remove. Okay. With the tip, as you can see, it's a beautiful round tip, but there's no paint in it. So on your tape at the side, depress your tip and pump slightly. And you will see the green paint starting to work its way down. Keep pumping until your tip is saturated. And there we go, ready to paint with. So I'm bringing that now, that's much better. Into your hills and along the base, making sure you keep a straight line at the base. There, so you fill in the whole area. Come into your castle a little bit, that's fine. And again, pump slightly. 
and paint on. There. Excellent. Now I want some depth in these and then we're going to merge them and make them look more like hills. So I only want a tiny amount of black on here just to add a bit of depth because I don't want black, I just want a darker green here and there. So I'm using the 2mm black and again make sure you've got paint coming through. Pump your marker and we're going to bring it down where it touches the building along the base edge of the hills and on the darker side of this hill just there. Now again, like I said, not too much. We don't want black. There. Now, using the small flat brush with a tiny bit of medium on it, again, tap off excess. I'm literally going to take that dark and merge it in with the green. I'm not concerned about the light yet. I'm just going to merge that dark in with the green so it becomes a darker green, creating a nice sharp edge at the bottom. And bring that in and merge that down. Now remember if the paint's not moving or starts to stiffen, add a tiny touch more of the medium and move that paint again. Get rid of the hard lines. There. Now rinse that off. Tap off excess medium and we're going to take this light. So I'm going to adjust that there, take that there and take that down into your green. There, merge it into the dark. I'm going to soften all that in just a moment. So again, taking the light down, and merge it in. Once you've done that, it's time to sharpen up these hills and merge those colours a little bit more. So you just move them slightly. So rinse your brush off, and we're just going to flow and create the shape that you want your hills in using your brush marks. And as you can see, the white paint that was underneath has reactivated because I've applied the medium. And it's starting to move so that I can actually create the shape of these hills. I'm gonna sharpen that waterline. We will bring that out in a bit. There, wipe off the dark colors so you can merge and bring it into the light. There. Let's take that sharp edge off there and round that off a little bit. Yeah. Now you can add more colours to this if you like. I'm going to put a bit more yellow on there in a minute to brighten that up a little where the sun's hitting it. And again, on this side, merge and merge. Don't forget, when you go from moving dark colours, wipe your brush. And let's merge that in just there. Create the shape of these hills. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit more highlight in those. So again, with your yellow, pump slightly on your tape to get it moving. Let's get that green off the nib. So we've got a brighter yellow. Let's just wipe that off. There. Blood, and there we have a brighter yellow. So as you can see, it's very easy to clean your nibs. Now there's quite a lot on there, so I'm just going to tap that on the tissue to prevent too much coming through. And there we go. A bit more yellow highlight going on there. So you can play with these as long as you like to get the effects that you wish. There. Now, again, small flat brush. And soften that in. There, separate those two hills with light and dark. Like that. There we go. And as the colours have toned down because of the white in the background, let's push them further back. So when we put the brighter background in, those will push further back. Okay, the water is now touch dry and ready for its finishing touches. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either do it by using the tiny white and drawing your reflection lines on. Or you can take your larger white, your 8mm white, flood it slightly on your tape so you've got some colour. This is my preference way of doing it because you, get, uh, you can blend the edges that little bit more. Pick up on your small flat brush and tap in to create
create light reflection on your water along the horizon line or the water edge just there and bring that in always make these horizontal make your water sit down flat if you start doing them that way or at an angle your water is going either up or downhill in which case add a lot more white in and create rapids so there we go now soften those in a little bit so rinse your brush off take off the excess medium and soften some of these in not all of them just soften some of the edges in there we go just like that that will give you a little bit of depth shadow and highlight on the water and light reflection there and also that water is starting to put those hills more into perspective it's pushing them back slightly what will really make the difference in those is when we get the castle on now the sky up here is tacky but touch dry so we're going to get the castle on now now to start with we need the eight mil yellow so eight millimeter yellow there we go and make sure that you've got nice color paint coming out always test on your tape before you start painting if i went straight onto here I'd have ended up with that green colour. So wipe your nib, pump a little bit of the yellow through, now miss that bit there, flood your marker slightly and there we go, a nice bright yellow. Okay, so I'm using the 8mm and it's got a nice chisel tip on there so I can reinstate my castle. Yeah, now it's going into the blue slightly, that's okay. Just like that. It's not going to wind up blue on this castle. So redraw in your castle with your yellow. I'm going to add more colours into this later so it's not going to end up a bright yellow castle. Okay, bring that up there slightly and drop down. As you can see, I'm reinstating where the castle was. If it changes slightly to its original drawing, that's fine. It's not a problem at all. There we go. And then we've got the tower here. Yeah, put it over the hills. So they're there. And we've got the shadow section, which will be there. Okay. Now, again, your lines in your drawing aren't important. If you get your castle completely smooth, it's not going to look like brickwork, so we are going to muddy this up a bit as well, once we've got the other colours in there. Yeah, not enough coming through, just flood slightly. There we go. Lovely. Now as you can see, those little drips on there, we're going to take those off in just a second. So don't panic if you do spatter your painting. It's not a problem. You can always fix it. So let's get the wall in. There we go. And to the grassy edge down there. Right, let's clean those up and then we'll get the other colours in to the castle wall. So, taking the corner of your brush, take them off. There we go. Once you've taken the colour off, clean your brush off. Tiny, tiny touch of medium and just feather that in. Just like that. There we go. And tap with your finger just to finish the feathering. Okay, so now we've got the yellows on. As you can see, where I flooded here, you can see it's starting to settle into the canvas. That's okay, because we're gonna be laying more colors on the top. All that means is you've put a little bit too much on there, but it's not a problem. Better too much than not enough. But if there's not enough, add more. Now, I know it's gonna sound odd, this color, putting it into the castle. We're gonna use bronze. Now it's not going to turn out bronze. We're using the eight mil, uh, sorry, the fifteen mil chisel uh, wide tip there. And as you can see, it's a beautiful bronze with yellow in it still already <laughs> from the last path that I did on the other painting. So I'm going to come down into the castle and cover my yellow. Now it doesn't matter what lines you leave with this; just cover all of your yellow like that. There. Now that will start to mix with the yellow and it will take the metallic off the bronze. So this isn't going to turn out bronze. It's going to turn out beautiful castle colour. 
Uh, and where there's more yellow and more bronze. And the wall. There we go. So as you can see, we haven't quite come down there, but rather than risk pushing that further out, you can do that with your brush. We're going to merge that colour now. So again, using your small flat brush, wipe out most of your medium and literally merge it. It doesn't matter how you merge it, tap it, move it, any way you like. As long as using the flat side of your brush to create your nice sharp edges around the outside using the corner there to get the small piece in. Bring that down and cover that yellow. There. Merge this in. Now again, brush marks on your castle do not matter. It'll just make it look like distant brickwork. At this sort of distance, we're not going to be drawing bricks on. If you start drawing bricks on your building, you're going to bring your castle too far forward. The more distant something is, the less detail it has, hence the hills there. Those hills have now been pushed further back. And there will be once more when we get the detail in on this once it's dried. So again, just merging those two colours together, making sure there's no bright yellow at your edges. Bring that down. And as you can see, the bronze is starting to disappear. Let's sharpen that a little bit. There we go. I'm happy with that. Now you can see why we don't draw details in on the castle. If I'd have drawn those details in, I'd have just completely lost them all. Okay. So we'll get some shadow and highlighting on that once it's started to dry. So again, we're starting to move around the painting a bit more now. The next one is the path. Now the colour that I've got on the brush is okay for a path, but we need more of it. So we're going to do the path more or less the same colours as the castle. So starting off with your yellow. There we go. And the path started up here. We'll bring that in and around, getting wider as you come down. Making the yellow more sparse so that the path can get darker as it comes forward, giving you your tonal recession as well on your path. So your path actually represents tonal and horizontal recession. Okay, so with your bronze, again, just touching in the distance because we just want to take that garishness off the yellow and then apply more as you come further to the foreground. So the path gets darker. Now we're going to add some shadows onto that path later, so really define that as a path. And I want my path to sit down and flat rather than at an angle, so be careful. When you start stroking this with your brush, don't do it at an angle because your path will be on a slope. I want this one to sit flat. If you want your path at an angle, use your brush at which angle you want your path to sit at. There. Now we're going to add more darker colours to the foreground when we add the shallow shadows on. If you leave bits of yellow on the edges of your path, that's fine. It does not matter. There. It's just touching the distance there to hide some of that colour in the distance of the blue. Excellent. Now, texture in your path, horizontal texture, is perfect. Because it will give more of an impression of a path with shadows going across it. That will be defined more so when we get the shadows on. Okay, the castle is touch tacky. That's literally how quickly it dries. And this is oil paint. It's quite incredible, to be fair. That's why I like taking these on location. With on, on, on location with these, I don't have to take a full art kit with me. I just need the medium and a handful of markers and a few brushes. That's it. And of course the canvas. You can just sit and paint for hours with these. And as, by the time you've packed all your art kit up, it's dry. So you're not going to get it all in your car or all in your bag if you're walking. Okay, so next I'm going to come in and put some shadows in on the castle. So the shadow mix, if I move this down slightly, I'm going to mix on the tape up here. Now all I need for that is red and black. Okay, so again, give these a good shake. Now darker colours, make sure you really do open them away from your picture. There. So there's the black. Flood a little bit out there. There. And same with the red. Flood a little bit out. Now 
Now, to mix up the shadow mix with these two colours, it's quite simple. Mix a bit of the black with some of the red. So take some red down here, mix in some of the black. That's a little bit too much on the black, but keep mixing because the colour will change as those pigments merge together. As you can see, it's starting to go like a purpley colour. Tiny touch more red, not too much, because you don't want it too red. There we go. Now, this needs to be transparent, so add some of the thinner. And to test its transparency, run it over an already dry colour. As you can see, it is transparent. So that's exactly what I want. Now, don't have too much on your brush because it does have thinner in it. And you don't want to drag this underpainting, so don't start stabbing at it. Gently swipe a single stroke. So the shadows, this tower and this tower here are rounded. So I'm going to take that down the darker side because the light's coming from the right of the tower. And again, on the smaller tower, take it down the left of each tower. There. Now you can see that one, I stroked it a couple of times, started to move the paint underneath, so I'll have to reinstate that shadow in just a little while. Rinse your brush off, and again, hardly any medium in this, just a damp brush. And all I'm going to do is just touch that to soften that edge in, and to merge that across. And the same on this one, just touch it, and merge it across slightly. Wipe your brush off, and then wipe your brush down the whole of the tower to soften it in slightly. As you can see, it's already starting to show a slight bit of rounding on there. I'm going to apply some more in just a moment. Let that dry for a bit. Now we're going to start getting some other shadows on while that's dry. We're going to come back to those towers. Build your colours up. Allow each area to go tacky. So here we have that side of the building there that we had going up slightly. Now this is a sharp edge to the building, just there, and again, just there. Get that nice and straight. Add more colour. Get that properly deep shadowed in there. There we go. And now, here, have a shadow here coming up there and there that will just add a 3d effect onto that part of the building there here half of this where we did those two sections of the building down to your wall don't bring your shadow into your wall we've got a wall running along here make sure it's at the same height there and fill that in this whole area there is shadowed out Okay, so now we need to add your other shadows coming in. These will be casting shadows on here. This will be casting shadow on the wall. This will be casting shadow on here. So we need to get those shadows in. Now what casts a shadow is actually darker than the shadow it casts. Bit of a tongue twister there. So add a tiny touch more medium to your brush. Now we need to put this on a little bit lighter. So if you go darker with this, stroke over it again to lighten it. So at the angle there and bring that across into what's casting the shadow now as you can see this has gone on darker but that's not a problem i'm going to lighten this alternatively you can darken down the item which is causing the shadow there so just a couple of extra strokes in there turn that down so i'm going to darken that and the same over here now remember keep these at the same angle and that's coming right the way down to there Just like that. And this wall turns a slight corner, so we can split this wall in half. I'm going to pop a shadow in there. Now your flat brush, giving shadows, will give you some beautiful sharp edges. Again, don't worry about brush marks when you're painting. It'll just add to the castle building itself. Okay, so I've got to darken these shadows as well, so a little bit more shadow mix. Now, you can mix up a slightly darker shadow. I added a tiniest touch of more black. 
there we go just there so I'm just going to darken this shadow that's better and then we're going to return to those towers so the item that casts the shadow must be darker than the shadow it casts there okay so a tiny touch more red in there to lighten it slightly because this tower here at the same angle We'll cast a shadow on the wall here at the same angle. There. Stroke over that again just to lighten it slightly. I've got to keep this section and this section separate. We'll put some windows in here anyway shortly, which will change that. So now, returning to those towers, we've got to get that rounded effect on those towers. So, mix a little bit more shadow. As you can see, I'm not adding any more medium to my brush. I want this shadow darker. Bring that down. And again, on the tower itself. At the side. Rinch brush off. Or even use a clean brush if necessary. And I'm literally just going to touch and drag that across, taking the light into the dark and the dark into the light. There. Again, don't worry about brush marks at this stage. And literally tease that shadow around that corner. Just round that shadow off. We don't want any hard lines on this shadow. But do need it darker, so add more when necessary. There. Just like that. And if you've got very good hearing, you can actually hear my cat snoring in the background. My voice has obviously put her to sleep. Now, if you find that you're getting too much dark over here, because the light is coming from that way, you can add more highlight to your building with your highlight colour. So I've just add a tiny touch more yellow in there and there and drag that across. So, there we go. Just drag that in and drag that across. Now, we don't want bright yellow on there. And just a little bit of highlight won't go miss. It'll separate the buildings. Drag that in. Again, you can play with this for hours. If it stops moving or the paint goes too stiff, just add a tiny touch more medium to your brush. There. So we're starting to get a more of a 3D effect on the castle. Now, the last bit I need to do with shadows on this castle itself is here where the bushes are. So that those bushes sit in front of the castle, I need to put their shadow behind it. So again, your black and red mix. And all I'm going to do is literally using the corner of the brush is crush that in just there, just above where the bushes are going. Now I'm going to take the bushes into that shadow so they're not sitting underneath. There, like that. Now with a clean damp brush, so rinse your brush off. And just merge that in very gently. You don't want this too harsh a shadow, so soften it in. Okay, just like that. Soften that in. Now some of that you can use and take up onto the building to create a little bit of texture. We don't want blunt buildings. Texturise it slightly. Wipe off and then again just soften that in with the corner of your brush. Like that. There. We have more texture in the building. Excellent. So now again Moving around a bit, because we need this bit to dry before we put these trees on, because I want some really prominent highlights on those little bushes there. So I'm going to come and put the base washes on the bridge. Okay, so again, that bridge is going to be made from the same brick as your castle, so the same colours should go into it. So starting off with your yellow. And literally, hold on, the whole bridge. A little bit of other things in there, that's okay. There we go, bring that down and reinstate your bridge. 
cobain. And you're down to an into your grasses. So when you flick your grasses through, where you've got gaps in your grasses, you'll still see ridge through there. So don't leave a gap. Come through your pencil line. There and under there, I'm going to put. There's the underneath the bridge. You can see we will shadow that out in a bit, but we want the brick colour first. We'll get some highlights and shadows in. Okay. Now again, you don't have to be tidy at this stage. The bronze. Now this is quite a handy colour on the bronze because I can use this to create my brick marks on the bridge. All I'm doing is just tapping through and wiping in the shape of bricks. Now a bridge this close you are going to see some brick work but again you don't want it over detailed. Just like that. Under the bridge you're not going to see brick marks so I'm just going to take that around and down. Okay just like that. Now here the reason I've left this bit is because using the marker on its side I'm going to create the coping stones. We will define that with shadow once that's dried but for now we'll leave that to go tacky. Okay so we're starting to get a bridge effect going on there. That should have given me enough time now for this yep touch tacky. Okay so the bush is here I'm going to want some highlights in there so I'm going to put my highlights on first. Now with these paints because it's oil you can paint light on dark but I like to get my highlights in first because it gives me an idea of the shape of the trees and also if you get too much on it doesn't matter put more darks in it'll cover it. If you need to go lighter afterwards you can apply more after. So again making sure there's paint coming through the tip of your uh, four mil marker yellow and all I'm going to do is literally tap on where I want those highlights. And you notice I'm coming into the shadows on the castle. There, bring it up and into those shadows. It starts disappearing into the paint behind it. It's not a problem, you can always reinstate it. There, so I've got the highlight, the light coming in from that side. Next, green. There we go, so applying the green. A little bit of white in that green, so let's just wipe off the nib. That's better. It's the dark green, this is. And we're applying that where all of the bushes are. Into your yellow slightly. Don't cover all of your yellow. Because we're going to tap merge it in in a little bit. There. So it leaves that yellow. Bring that down there. Now we want a bit more depth in these. We are going to merge this and make it look more like trees in just or bushes in just a second. But we need the black. Again, I'll go to my 2mm black. 4mm would leave me too much black in there. I don't want too much, so I'm going to the 2mm black. Just pump through to make sure there's some coming through your pen. There we go. And all I'm going to do is tap to the left of each bush. And to the base. Yeah, just get some more coming through there. There we go. There's plenty still left in this marker. So to the base of each tree. And to the left. Now because the paint underneath is a bit wet, it's not moving off. So I'll keep dipping back into that squeeze out that I did rather than risk flooding on my painting. Don't risk flooding your painting. You can correct it, but if you don't need to, there, and we're going between the trees as well. There. Separate those trees out. Now, there's two ways that you can actually make those look more like bushes. One is to use the, sh the flat of a, a small brush and tap it on the side like that. The other alternative is to use a round and stipple it like that. Okay, so I'm just going to use this round to take the dark into the green and create some bush shapes. Now again, we don't want too much black in here. Now the green is vanishing, so I'll reinstate that afterwards. 
and we reinstate some middle greens because we've got the dark greens in there now so it's merged with the black take that into the yellow we're going to reinstate the greens and we'll put some more highlights on so for now i just want the base shapes of my bushes and as you can see that's given me the rough shape that my bushes should be so now we're going to really bolden those up so back to your yellow and tap in those highlights there and as you can see the shadow behind on the castle itself is giving the shadow so the bushes are in front of the castle not underneath it green and tap in that in there and there as you can see it's boldening these colours a little bit more. You don't want any more black in this, there is plenty in there. No more black. And again, rinse, dry your brush off. This is a dry brush, there's no medium in this at all, so just wipe it off. And I'm literally just touching that green into the yellow and the yellow into the green. There, merge those again. Just like that. And there we have distant bushes against the castle. Now you can make those bolder if you want. I actually like them at that level for now. I might add more depth to them later on, but for now we'll just leave them as they are. The reason being, the most depth is in here, which is the foreground, the complete foreground. So what we're going to do now is the grasses here. We've also got, even though I didn't draw them in, a couple of trees to put in here and still the windows to go in on the building and some detailing on that bridge. So first things first, I'm going to add the detail in here because this is now touch tacky and for that I need my 2mm black. Now remember, get that black flooding. If it's not, don't flood it on your painting. Okay, so I'm going to add some windows here, here and here. Just lines, that's all you need. Again, watch you don't lean on this too much if it's still wet. The path is completely dry, so I can lean on that. And we're going for here. There we go. Here. 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 Yeah, so we're starting to get some detail in on here now. Now here we have an arched window. Pump that marker a little bit, get that flood in. Never flood at this stage when you're doing detail, never flood it onto your painting. That's better. And we have a square window just underneath it. There, we have a large hole here. This used to be where they hoisted materials and furniture and all sorts into the castle. There was a full framework at the top here that's long since gone as this castle is in ruins. And we have an arched window here. And then lower down here we have two half arch windows or small spy holes effectively. There. And we have a window here. And there is here is actually hovered halfway up the building, but it's actually a door. Now there used to be another section on here and it's all broken away so that is actually a door and it's got all broken brickwork around it so here we have a double window just there we have a single window there and we have a window lower down here and that will actually help separate the wall from the castle. Now you've noticed I've done no battlements on there at all. I didn't even draw them in and that's because as soon as the paint goes on the drawing is gone so don't spend too much time on your drawing. Now to get those battlements in again it's using a shadow mix and all we're doing is the red that's gone a little stiff so I'm going to use a tiny touch of the medium just to get that moving. There we go. Some of the red and black again for shadow. There. And all I'm going to do now is turn the brush on its side and use the small sharp edge of the side there and just literally create your battlements there. 
So rather than draw them in, apply them in with the shadow mix after. And that saves me having to draw all of this. My pencil line is gone, so you can't see that I've drawn a straight line. Yeah, it's kind of broken at the top there, so it's bits of shadow everywhere. And there we go. Simple. This will also help separate the wall from the castle. So I'm literally just going to bring those in, create some battlements here as well. So when you brush over it, it starts to fray a little. There. Now you notice where I've laid it over existing shadow mix, it still shows up. And the reason being, we've made the shadow quite transparent. So as a result, when you lay one transparent colour over the top of another, even if it's the same colour, it's just going to darken it down. There. So we have the details and the battlements in on the castle itself. There we go. Now I'm going to move on to the grasses here. Okay, and I'm going to edge that path, make that path sit down a little bit more. But before that, I'm going to create the shadow going across the path. These grasses here will leave a shadow on that path. So how you do that is using your black. I'm going to go to the 4 mil black now because I want a little bit more than what the 2 mil can give me. But I don't want the 8 mil black because that's far too much. So what I'm doing is literally just touch the edge of the path here. And as you come down... Bring it in that little more, just like that. Take your fan brush with a tiny touch of medium in it. So wipe out all the excess. And all I'm doing is, first of all, in the distance, just drag that black across the path slightly. Now, remember, the shape that you put this in will determine the shape of your path. So if you want your path arched or if you want it dipped, use the brush marks accordingly. So as you can see, I'm not bothered about coming into here because we're going to be painting in there anyway. I'm just bringing that in. Just like that. Add that tiny touches of shadows and texture across the path. Careful around your bridge. So I'm just going to use my smallest brush now, a bit more medium in there, just to tone that down in the distance there. There we go. Now you can drag with this one across the whole lot if you wish, but it will take a lot longer. The fan brush gives a nice effect and it doesn't drag all of it, so it kind of gives a dragged effect. If you use a flat brush on that, again, it just drags it all as a solid colour. So the fan brush is ideal for that. Okay, so the grass is here now. Uh, so I'm going to be using the large, so I've got the yellow, the dark green, and the black. Now these are going to look a lot much brighter than what these are here, and that's because there's no white behind the background. Also, I'm not going to be toning it down like I did with those ones there either. These are going to go on quite bold. So first of all, highlight colour. Now what you have to remember is this here and this tower is going to be casting a shadow onto the grass. This wall is going to be casting a shadow onto the grass. So try and avoid that area with your yellow. The light is coming from this way, so bear that in mind with under your bushes as well. It's going to leave shadows down here on your grass. So I'm going to put some highlight in there, down here, leaving a gap. Your bushes line your or edge your path. Now, this bridge, to bring it forward in front of the grass, is going to have dark behind it. So, bear that in mind when you're laying on your highlight colour. There. Now, as you can see, there's quite a bit of paint on there, but not too much. If you flood at this point too much, when you flick your grasses, it's going to flick up your painting. So, be very careful not to do that. So, again, the green. Now, the green fills everywhere where you haven't put yellow. Bring it into your yellow slightly. That's fine. Okay, so around your bridge, up to your wall. Don't be too precious with this. Don't have to be worried about where it's going. Bring it into your yellows on your grass and up to your trees, uh, your bushes in the distance there. There we go. We'll get these trees in once that area is dried. So, black. 
There we go. So again, you only need a few touches on the edge of your path there, under your bushes. Remember, we don't need too much of this. Bring that in where that would be casting shadow, and again, where the wall is casting shadow, and at the top of your bridge, just there. Add a few bits here and there. Now, to turn those into brasses, you just need your fan brush. So as you can see, there's a tiny bit of medium in there, not too much. And all we're going to do is literally touch and flick. There we go. Now, at the moment, it seems like as though the yellow and the green have dried a little bit too much to flick effectively. So, rinse your brush in medium. So, there's a little bit more medium in there. And as you can see now, the green and yellow are more readily movable. So, again, if your paint goes too stiff, add a bit of medium in there. There. Now, I've got too much black in there. But again, that's not a problem. Flick it all to start so that you can see where there's too much. And then you can add more greens or yellows. So, because we don't want this to look black, it will flatten your painting. So what I'm going to do now is add more green, that's the black, over the top of my blacks, just to get that darker green. Now there's not looking too bad, but I'll add a bit more there. And there. And there. Wipe your brush off so you get rid of most of the, dark, the black off there and then again flick that green through. So you've got your darker greens, your lighter greens and get rid of most of the black. We don't want jet black on here. And again if it's gone too dark it, you can put more yellows in if necessary. Now it's starting to stiffen up so I'm going to add a bit more medium to my brush and again start to flick again. As you can see the medium moves this so much more readily edge your path. Get rid of all white marks. If you leave any white canvas behind, all you're going to leave behind in the end is yellow because that canvas will absorb the oil and the oil will send your white canvas yellow. And a not very nice yellow as well. So I'm going to add a tiny touch more yellow in there. Talking of yellow. Here. Here. Reinstate the highlights but here I'm edging the path just there like that. Now you notice I haven't really touched the grasses over here because we're going we've got the shadows from the trees and there and then just literally get rid of any hard lines by flicking through them. Yeah. Simple. So you can see the shadows are now coming from the castle onto your grasses and the shadow from the trees onto there as well. So just a few more things left to do here. First of all, we've got to get the colour in under here. So the colour is basically this field colour here. But again, you've got to be careful flicking up because you don't want to get it on the underneath. So first things first, get your green in there. The bridge itself is cast in a shadow, so I don't want too many yellows or any yellows in there. Put some black down here. And what I'm going to do is touch with this brush along the top there to give a little texture at the top. I'm going to sharpen this edge in a minute. And then all I'm doing is flicking that black up and touching above it, just there. And then just tap that in. All we want is a bit of texture under there. We don't want big grasses coming up and over onto the bridge. Okay, so that's more than enough. Don't do that too much. Okay, so you can see we've already got the shadows on the grass. By edging the path there, the path is sitting more down. So while we're waiting for this a little bit more, I'm just going to put some bushes in here, or trees rather. So again, first of all, this time I'm just going straight in with the green rather than the yellow first. And I'm going to create the shape of my trees. Now flip this marker slightly, so depress that tip. So we have one tree here. And we've got a big bush here. I'm stippling on is I want to leave sky coming through that slightly. Also I'm going to merge it in a minute so we'll lose some of that so don't add too much. Next I'm going to add your black. Now again using your two mil because you don't want too much. The smallest amounts. That's it. There. 
that's not coming through again. So flood your marker away from your painting until it comes through. And too much green saturating into the black tip. So there we go. Lovely. And to the base, and to the base of that one as well. Now, before I put my highlight on, I'm going to draw in some branches and trunks, boughs and whatnot. So I need the brown. There it is. So the brown. So I'm just literally just drawing that in and on there. The reason I'm doing that before the highlight colour, I'm going to push those branches inside the tree with the highlight. Just like that. Okay. And what you need to add is a little bit of depth to those. So your black on your shadow side of your tree. Not too much, just a touch. So that it doesn't look flat. Now, add your yellows to your highlight side of your tree. As you can see, you're coming over the branches. So to the top and to the right of each tree. Now you can either, again, use your dry round brush and tap that in the same as you did those bushes there, or you can use the side flat, side of your flat brush. I'm using the side of the flat brush, so I want a slightly different effect on this. I'm just squeeze out the medium out of my brush and tap just on the side, not too much, because you want some of that effect to show through. Leave some areas with the branches showing through, take the dark into the lights and the lights into the darks. If you haven't got enough darks, add a little bit more. And like that. There we go. Take some of that darker down a bit more. So if you see any black lumps, squash them. So squash all the black lumps first. And then squash your yellow lumps. But don't squash those too much. We want some of that yellow showing through. If you go too far at this stage and squash too many, just add a little bit more. It's not a problem. And there we go. So we have trees. Now you can just about see through those trees we have a few branches and boughs and whatnot. Okay, so that's a nice effect for trees there. Now, last two finishing touches to this painting. We have the foreground grasses here and we have the details on the bridge. So next I'm going to get the details in on the bridge. And again, that's done with your shadow mix. I'm running out of black up the top there. Flood a little bit more black out. We need some shadow. And flood a tiny bit more red as well. Again, open it away from your painting. So if you put your lid on while it's flooding, when you open it next time, it's going to flood. So it's always best to wipe them off. But again, away from your painting. There, crumbs. So again, mix in some shadow. So black. A bit of medium on your brush so it becomes transparent. And red. A bit more black in there. Tiny touch more. Now first things first, I'm going to come around here and create the second part of the walkway. So you're looking through the bridge to there, like that. Sharpen up those edges. Then I'm going to create under here. I'm going to tidy all this up in just a second. There, so you've got your walkway. I'm going to merge that in. in. So rinse off the brush. And start moving it around so first things first I've got to get that highlight through there so I'm just going to sharpen that and remove most of the shadow mix to that point to create the shape of the bridge there so you've got the walkway between the two parts of the bridges wipe your brush off and take out more of that color if you need to put more highlight in there you can do now I'm just going to soften this in under here Just like that, so it's not a hard line. I'm going to add some more highlights in there in just a moment. But for, before then, let's get the rest of the shadow in there. So all I'm going to do with these is literally creating a brick shape like this. Not on every brick, just here and there. Cover those bright, bright yellows. We don't want the bright, bright yellows on this bridge at this stage. Okay, so the light's coming from this way. So the bricks that are protruding slightly will have shadow on this side. That's the same for the coping stones as well. We're going to soften that in in just a moment. Let's let it settle for a bit first. Separate your coping stones. 
just like that and completely under the bridge so at this point now you can really sharpen that edge like that get a bit more paint on there excellent and fill that in starting to take a bit of shape now. Excellent. Now rinse your brush off and all I'm going to do is just soften in with a tiny bit of medium on my brush. Start to soften in these, creating shadowed bricks. I don't want to leave them hard like that. Just shadow bricks, not too many. Just soften that in. To give the impression of brickwork. Now the castle wouldn't have detail brick working on it because it's too far away. The bridge, however, you would see brickwork. But rather than detract from the castle, don't start drawing every single brick in. You don't want to detract. The castle is the main feature. The bridge is a secondary feature. So all we're doing is giving the impression of brickwork. So don't start painting all of your brickworks in individually. Give the impression and tone down some of these highlights and the yellows on the bridge. Those yellow highlights will draw the eye. We don't want to draw away from the castle. But at the same time, we need a bridge in place there. So again, soften these ones in on the coping stones. Just like that. Wipe your brush off regularly. Tone down any bright yellows. There. And that will give the impression of detailed brickwork. Again, too much yellow there. Tone that down. Too much there. And there we go. So there we have an impression of a bricked bridge. Just tone down any yellows. Just touch them with your brush with your shadow mix already on it. And there we go. So we have bridge there. Now the reason I didn't bring it over here, don't forget we've got grasses coming up here yet and we've still got these grasses to go. So this is the last part of the painting now. So again, yellows and lots of them. Flood that yellow. There, get that out, and we're going to come bring that up around here. Reinstate your old water line that you had before. Okay, now some of the blues have merged, that's fine, it'll just go green. I'm going to bring that along there, like that, and to here. And I don't want too much yellow down here because that's mostly going to be shadowed out. There we go, a bit of flooding there. Now remember, if there's too much flooding at this stage, be careful how you flick. This flicks up your painting. You're going to have to do a spot repair, which is take the paint off, feather it in with a brush, and then tap it to finish the merge. Okay, so green. And again, you've already got greens up here, light greens, because it's merged with the blue. So leave those greens be. I'm going to put in some green down there, here in between your yellows, so we want highlights on this part and lots of them. Down here, we want lots of greens. Bring that in and onto your bridge. And add a bit more green in there. there we go. This area is normally flooded during winter months. So, black. Again, you don't want any black in your distance because it's tonal recession. We want it lighter as it goes further away. But we do want some black at the edge of the path, only small amounts. Black's down here and plenty of it, but not as much as the yellow or the green. And a few bits here and there, some shadow. So again, going back to your fan brush, starting in the distance and gently flick up onto your water. If the paint's starting to stiffen, use a bit of medium to flick that paint up. There we go. Get rid of any hard line edges, you don't want them there. And here, onto your path. 
flick that over and onto your path. We're going to flick some highlights over onto those in just a second. Again, add more medium if your paint isn't moving. Add more paint if you need to. And we are just getting rid of any sharp line edges like that. Now, if you come onto your bridge a bit, don't worry, because we are coming onto the bridge completely in a minute. Right, and there we go. I'm getting some grasses in there now. As you can see, the black is more or less disappearing. And we're bringing that up, across and onto the bridge, just like that. There, so as you can see, where I've left gaps, you can see through onto the bridge. Get rid of any hard lines. And there we go. One painting finish. All's left to do now is remove your tape. Now, when you're removing tape, always peel it away from your painting. Lauren Cashlin's Marvinshire, beautiful project to do, even better on location. The first time I painted this was actually for my book, uh, for watercolour, Castles of the UK. Um, you can see an image of it there, it's also available on my website. And I actually painted those on location, it was an amazing environment, amazing atmosphere to actually be there and to see. I can just sit and imagine what stories those walls can tell. So I hope you've enjoyed this product, project. I certainly have. Um, now, as you can see, it's a lovely shine on that. And all of this is dry. Now, you can protect this after 24 hours. You can protect it with either a gloss varnish. There's already a beautiful gloss on there. But it will move still with the medium. So make sure that you do protect it. Gloss varnish. A mat, if you're displaying in a well-lit area, is always good to prevent light shine and we have satin as well okay so make sure you protect your painting once it's completely bone dry i really hope you've enjoyed this project i know i have i look forward to seeing you soon